ties together. So this light, there's two, there's two of them in there, and they're tied together so that either sensor on either side will uh, turn it on. So this video will show you how to do this with uh, using a single light, oh, using a single, single light source, and you and you have to use a single power source, and the wires are tied together. Uh, the only problem is that the uh, system has been retired. The new system probably has the same internal circuitry, but I'm not sure. But watch the video if you're interested in doing it, and it's not too hard. So here I am, and I'm going to tie these two nor flies together so that either one of them will turn on when one of them detects that the door is open or that would should turn on normally. And to do this, I've disassembled it, and there is instructions on how to do it online. The hardest part is here. You're going to have uh, the, IR, the IR transmitter and the IR transistor in here. you got to pull them off. Uh, when you pull them off, it's easy to remember the orientation which side they go. And also, if you remember... This one's going to be easy to see which one's the anode and cathode, but on your transistor you can't see you can't see where your uh, I would call it the drain in drain in emitter. I forgot the name of the parts. It's been not too long out of double E, but it's where uh, the two sides are going. Just remember where these things are bent when you take it off. Easiest way to take it off is get some of the solder flux, the copper solder flux, suck off the solder, and it comes off. So that's pulling it out of there, and then you pull these out carefully, and so I'm at the point where I'm going to build the build my modify my circuit so that I can uh, tie these two together. So internal to here you have N2. What N2 does is it's a microcontroller. It detects it, it transmits and receives the IR right there, and so it knows. I think it does pseudo random code because looking at it, it looks like there's random bits being generated in and out. So it compares input output, and so it knows that if it's uh, if it's detecting stuff on the transmitter, meaning that the door is closed, it's transmitting. But if it's not. It means that, okay, now I'm going to drive the circuit high and turn on the light. So what I'm doing is that it's going to be both of these. So I have my first one. I have, uh, where is it? Over here. All right, so here's N2 on this one. Here's N on this one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually tie the, the R3 outputs on here together with an external wire. Uh, so what I have to do is I have to end up replacing R3 on here. And this is the circuit right here. An earlier version of this... Uh, a previous Norfly, they call them different numbers, but the circuit is exactly the same. Unfortunately, Norflies are now uh, discontinued. There's a newer version. I don't know internally what it is, but I suspect it's the same thing because this circuit, it's named different components, but this exact circuit is part of it. So you look at the output of N2, and you see this first, this, uh, this is probably a current limiting resistor to drop it to here. And then this right here is the driver that'll turn on the, uh, it'll probably allow a uh, the uh, light to the LEDs to be uh, driven, or it either that or it drives the LED or drives a secondary transistor for it. I don't know. I didn't look at the circuit that much. I just looked at what I needed. These are all tied together here. This is the ground right here. What we're doing is replacing this R3 right here with this is the R3 that got removed. It's going to have a diode, and this diode is there so that the other one that's low does not drive the other one, so that the high one will dictate the whole circuit when you time together. And then I replace it with a resistor. I'm using the same. This is a 150 ohm resistor. I'm replacing it with the same. It's just a regular 4148 or 1N4148. Simple, cheap, and easy that I'm going to replace it with. And then I have this line out here. And this line is going to be the line to the other light. So this ties to the exact same circuit, this exact same circuit in the other two. So one's going to go from here. So in this, in this case, this one's going to be on the right side. This one's going to be the left side. So I'm going to have that line go from here out through here and then I'm going to cut a little hole in here the little wire is going to go out here on this one right here because this is going to be to the left of this one the wire is going to go out here and then it's going to have to uh, cut a hole in that one so those two are going to tie together right there this means that you have to be on the same circuit because your ground has to be relative uh, to each other they have to be close and so if you're tying you know if you're tying only one signal line together their grounds are connected and it's through a little bit of resistance, but not a whole lot. But if you have them on two different power circuits, these probably won't tie together. So you got to be on the same, just to guarantee it to work, you got to be on the same, uh, the same, the same plug or the same DC power source for it. So I'm going to get that, put that resistor in there, and I'm going to put this, uh, sorry, the resistor and the diode. And so it'll, the way this will work is that if either one of them will detect it.
being on. Uh, then it'll transmit there and it'll turn both lights on. So here I am, I just finished a soldering job on this. And you can see here's the uh, attached to the upper leg, the leg connected to uh, N2, the leg of uh, R3, that goes to the diode, the diode then goes to the resistor, then back through here. And it, sorry, I have a really crappy soldering iron and my soldering skills aren't the best. So uh, this right here, I had an automotive soldering iron. So if you look at the diagram right here, Q1, this, this leg of Q1, so the leg that's to uh, the far right on here, uh, R4, the upper leg, and then the RV2 are also connected. So you can actually have a, a blob them together like that. It's kind of nasty looking. Uh, the RV2 did move on me, so I had to reset that. That was kind of a pain, so be careful. That can easily pop off, usually get enough heat to pop off both legs. That right here, uh, what matters is the orientation because this leg is going to go this way. I have the wire going out, make sure it's long enough. Uh, this one's already completed right here. The wire is going out through here on that end. Uh, so I pre when I put this in, and something to notice too is uh, you don't want this stuff to stick out too high. And that's because if you look at the geometry of this, the specific to the Norfly, the replacement might give you more geometry or more space. But right here is that there's more space to the lower portion, to this side this side, the side closer to me of the circuit card. There's more space right there. So, so I'm going to run the wire. The only issue I'm going to have is here. I'm probably going to pull it out a little bit when I reinstall the uh, it, the LED or the IR emitter and the IR transistor in there. I'll probably pull it out right there and then do the soldering and throw it back on. That way I don't burn this wire. Uh, thinner wire is better. Just got a, probably about 10 to 15 milliamps to pull max. Uh, then I with this is there's some vias here I end up putting some uh, electrical tape on the bottom and then this is the final electrical top for continuity test I end up making sure that it's n23 n2-3 is connected to the the uh, transistor right there and then that this is connected here and that these are isolated so these three the q1 here especially from the ground so the ground's going to be on the other end of r4 the rv2 and the other end of Q1, especially right here, you can't really see it, but this is the really one that you can mess up really easily. So make sure those are isolated, make sure all your continuity is good, and then just reassemble. And I'll show you when I'm done reassembling it. So now I've reassembled it, and I have to reattach the IR transmitter and uh, receiver. I can see I have this the line that goes through on this side. So what I do is I want to pull it back, make a loop. That way I don't accidentally burn it when I attach it. And if you remember the orientation on these, you want to remember the orientation. Uh, these legs are bent. That's the easiest way to remember because you can't see which one's the anode, the cathode, or the uh, gate emitter, or however, the, uh, however this uh, transistor is set up. So if you see this right here, on the left side, you can't see it, but it's the clear one. That's a transmitter, it's an IR, and then that's the receiving transistor on the right. It's a black one. The legs are up right here. I have it set up right here, so that way it's holding it in the right position. And I just have to solder that, and I'll close it up. Then I'll do the other two. This one goes to this one, and the other pair over there goes to this one. I kept the pairs together, just in case if they were characterized at the factory. I think it would be in the middle of uh, the design specs but I don't really know. And I am changing it though with the diode in there, but I don't think it's, uh, well actually it doesn't matter for this because these are, there's a discrete digital between. Uh, uh, So here we are on the final test to make sure they work. This one's being reflected off the second one. These two are open right now, so they should turn on. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn off this one here by blocking it. And so it should still on because this one's controlling that. 
and this one right here, I blocked it, they're both off. If I disconnect this right here, then this they're all off right here. This one's on when that one's being open, that one's blocked. And that one's on when that one's blocked. And then if I tie it together, I'm gonna lose it right now. If I tie it together and then I still block this one, they're still on, so it works. So this video shows you how to tie together two different Norflies. And that's the IKEA PAX lighting system lights that run off sensors. So if you want them to run on their uh, auto sense mode, uh, they're nice to have. And I installed them inside just a regular uh, closet. But what's nice is that you have a second one over here. Uh, you have two of them tied together. So what I have it so that this one over here is tied to this one. So they control both lights there. And this is what it looks like installed. And if you have a single, a smaller closet, you can get away with one, but this will show you how to tie two of them together. Uh, that's the only problem is, is the uh, system has been retired or discontinued. The new system probably uses the same internals, but I did not gonna buy the new ones. So you that they have the same sensors. So I said, it's probably the same way they're using to control it, which is a, with a microcontroller. So the rest of the video will show you how to do this. So that way you can tie them together and have the closet go off on a single light.